Today, we're going to be talking about IOTA. My name is Donna, and before I even get started, I will put out a disclaimer that I am invested in IOTA, but I will try to keep the video as unbiased as possible. Let's jump into coin market cap. The max supply is already in the circulating supply with 2,779,530,283 MIOTA. IOTA is the cryptocurrency for the Internet of Things. Now, what is the Internet of Things? The Internet of Things is this concept where devices and things have this chip that essentially connect to the internet. So your laptop, your phone, your camera, things like the fridge or your coffee maker. These things have this chip that connects to the internet and they can interact with each other. So potentially your fridge can say, oh, you're out of carrots and order you a bunch of carrots. Now the best way to establish this system is through an online digital ledger like the blockchain. But IOTA isn't based on the blockchain, it's based on something called the Tangle. And in their white paper, the Tangle is described as an evolutionary step of the blockchain that's designed to help machine-to-machine micropayment systems. An implication of this can be seen through the partnership of IOTA and NetObjects. So first, think about the wireless charging capabilities of a Samsung phone. Imagine this with an electric car. A road can be built that wirelessly charges electric cars. With IOTA, your car will have a unique identification system that IDs it as your car. When you enter that lane, your car begins to charge and the car and the road interacts with each other. IOTA will be the system of payments that is used for this. So overall, I really like the website. It's nicely animated. Um, I love the graphics. I guess the only bad thing I can say is that if you have slow internet, it's gonna be hard to read. But other than that, it's a really good website. So we have here IOTA, the economy of things. There's a lot of use cases they present here. IOTA as the ledger of things and how IOTA will interact as the internet of things backbone. Here they describe the tangle and give a link to the white paper. Features are nicely laid out, which I will come back to when we get into the features section. We have the wallet download here, documentation, IOTA tutorials, white paper, the GitHub, community links, and then we have links to the side of their blog, developers, and newsletter. IOTA is based on the Tangle. Now, how does this differ from the blockchain? So in the blockchain, you have two different parties, people who issue transactions, and that's like me and you sending and receiving Bitcoin and people who approve transactions, and these are the miners. So the design creates some sort of unavoidable discrimination. Miners don't like micropayments because they want the highest reward. I was watching this video from David Hay and the concept of microtransaction for Bitcoin is, let's say, weird. In other words, the fees are super high. With the Tangle, the concept of the miner is completely cut out. Not exactly cut out, but the miner's role is changed. When people join IOTA and they join the Tangle, when they send and receive transactions, they also become miners. So while you're receiving and sending transactions, you're also approving or disapproving somebody else's transaction. And because of that, there are no fees. With that said, it also moves on to the next point, which is that it is infinitely scalable. The more users that join this network, the faster it becomes. IOTA can also be used for data transfer, e-governance and voting, masked messaging. Everything can be leased, like your bike, your drone, your drill. And there's obviously a lot more things that IOTA can't solve. It is also in nature quantum resistant and right now they're working on private transactions. One criticism I see is of IOTA's coordinator. As I said before, the more people that use the network, the faster and more scalable IOTA becomes. But right now, it's in its very early stage, so not enough people are using it. Because of that, there's this coordinator, which is kind of like training wheels for the system that prevents attacks from happening to IOTA. But because of that, a lot of people say that it's too centralized. The developers have stated that as IOTA gains adoption, this coordinator will soon be removed. Another point that people make and that I agree with is that the wallet right now sucks. One thing I noticed that every time there is an update in the wallet, your balance becomes zero. It doesn't become zero, but it shows zero. Um, the first time I saw this, I freaked out and thought that I was hacked. And later on the Reddit pages and the GitHub, I found out that I just needed to update the wallet. 
And now uh, they have clear instructions on the page of how to do this, but it actually isn't so black and white. A lot of people right now are just having trouble getting their funds back. They technically do still have their funds, but they're having trouble updating the wallet. Personally, it took me about three or four hours just to update. I have all my funds here, but three or four hours is, in my opinion, a little too long just for an update. But I also realized as an early adopter, this is something that you do have to face. Now I'm going to pull up an article that has a lot of criticisms of IOTA. One point they bring up is that it's impractical. A lot of processors in hardware right now, like your computer, work on a binary system, and this is one and zero. IOTA works on a trinary system, which involves negative one, zero, and one. Now, this system is actually more efficient than binary, but since everything right now is binary, does everything have to adapt to IOTA's technology? Another point they bring up is that IOTA disregards cryptographic best practices. Now, I don't have a programming background whatsoever, so I don't really understand the severity of this point. MIT found a flaw in their cryptographic hash. It says here, this violates rule number one of cryptography. Don't roll your own crypto. And so this was described as a very newbie mistake. So IOTA's co-founder has then said that these mistakes were deliberate and that it was kind of like a copy protection so that nobody would steal the code. So just as another disclaimer, I will say that this uh, article is very biased. I have no financial stake in the success or failure of IOTA. If it seems that I have a minus against it, it's purely because I believe good systems should succeed and bad systems should fail, in each case on their own merits. In the interests of full disclosure, I am a core developer of Ethereum. The IOTA team and development team have a reputation of being very transparent and open. They have a good amount of interaction on Reddit. There's good news almost every other day on their Reddit posts. So obviously, since I've decided to invest in IOTA, I think positively. I'm always for diversification and what's more diverse than putting your money into something that's not blockchain. However, I do recognize that as an early adopter of this project, there's going to be a lot of frustrations that just push people away. I also recognize that the internet of things is an already existing and growing business, but it doesn't mean that they have to use IOTA. They could use something else. But I do think that IOTA is a good candidate for this, from the German government recognizing them to their partnerships with Bosch. Because of that, I'm very bullish on IOTA for the long term. So again, just because I've invested in it doesn't mean that you have to too. In fact, please don't copy me. I do not want to be held responsible for that whatsoever. And obviously I'm not a financial advisor, but I hope you guys liked the video and I hope you found this very helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.